Hello everybody, Sebastian here from Cerebral Forex. Today we are going to be doing a introduction to trading Forex um, uh, presentation, just to show some of the basic concepts for people who have never traded before um, and who are looking to get into trading. Um, we will also talk about um, the systems that we use um, and, and, and what we have to offer the trading community. Okay, so today's agenda, why Forex and other leverage products, currency pairs explained, Forex lot sizes, long and short positions, how does Forex pricing work, introduction to leverage and margin, methods of trading, money management, stop loss and take profit, and trading for a living and some key things that you need to know. Um, we look at concepts like expectancy, um, some of our trading results and the analysis thereof, and then an introduction to the two systems that we use, which is called VolTrader and Price Action Bot. Uh, also our signals group and some of our other products. So let's begin. So why Forex? Well, Forex is a non-stop market. It's the largest trading market in the world with over $3.6 trillion traded each day. And it's 24-5 with the session starting in Sydney. So if we look at the picture on on the right, the sessions start in Sydney and work across the globe and, and end up closing in New York. They open on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time and close on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So 5 p.m. Eastern time is, is 11 p.m. South African time. Most of the action tends to happen close to the end of the London, London session and the um, the, the London session and the start of the New York session. So that's in this little section here. This is where we see most of the action, which is quite convenient. It's usually around three o'clock South African time. Also, the rise of electronic trading platforms has given access to the general market. So people like me and you, uh, we can access this market of trading through our laptops, through our cell phones, um, you, you can start trading with as little as $50 to $100. Um, and it's, it's not only confined to large institutions and big companies. Forex, the market is constantly moving. Um, this provides opportunity to, to profit. It's not a stagnant market. There's always action. You can always find a currency pair that is on the move. Also, it allows you to go long and short. So that means if you believe the price is going to go up, you're able to buy and profit from it. Or if you believe the price is going to go down, you can short and also profit from it. One of the key features when trading Forex is leverage. That's where the amount that you have deposited in your account when you trade, a broker will give you an additional amount known as margin or leverage for you to trade. For example, if you have an account of one is to a thousand, one dollar would equal effective trading power of a thousand rand. So you can see this does provide great opportunity for um, high profits, but it's also very dangerous if not managed properly. Um, and you can wipe out your account quite quickly if you don't practice proper risk management practices. Over and above this, most of the Forex brokers available will allow you to trade other leverage products, such as CFDs, which is effectively lev leveraged versions of shares. So if you wanted to trade Facebook or Apple, uh, metals like gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, oil, indices, indices would be like your volatility index, um, cryptocurrency, so Bitcoin, and other commodities, sugar, cotton, uh, all of these have different minimum position sizes and leverage amounts, and some are, might not be suitable uh, for all trading account sizes. For example, if I had a trading account of, say, $100, I probably wouldn't trade oil due to the minimum size that uh, an oil position would take. A standard position size is equal to 200 barrels of oil. Um, you might find that it's far too risky to start trading uh, things like oil, but trading something like the Euro versus the USD with a very small lot size is highly accessible. 
So let's talk about a few of the currency pairs. We're going to focus predominantly on Forex in this presentation, but the concepts generally um, are applicable to the other instruments as well. But for, for Forex, there's major currency pairs. These are your most popular currency pairs. They're the ones that have most of the volume traded on a daily basis, uh, uh, and they account for all of that. So we've got your Euro USD, your USD Japanese Yen, your British Pound USD, Australian Dollar USD, USD Canadian Dollar, USD Swiss Franc, New Zealand Dollar versus the USD as well. Then you have minor pairs and there's over 42 of these and it includes your Euro British Pound, your Euro Australian Dollar and your Euro Japanese Yen. We have exotic pairs and there's more than 67, or over 67 pairs. This is like South African Rand, um, the US dollar against the South African Rand, the South African Rand against the Japanese Yen, um, Singapore dollar against the Hong Kong dollar. These are less traded uh, uh, currency pairs. They don't account for the, the, the huge volume such as the major pairs do. And then again, as we spoke before, metals, energies, and indexes. One thing that is very important when trading currency is to understand the economic calendar. So this is a series of economic events that occur in different countries that directly impact their economies in some way or another. This in turn impacts the value of their currency. For example, interest rates, when there's an announcement for interest rates, uh, average hourly wages per a permanent employee, that may have an impact on a currency price because it indicates how well or how poor an economy is doing. Uh, and these news items are coming out every day. It's quite important to keep an eye out for uh, which of the news items, if you can see in this picture, this is, there's, we have an orange, orange dots, yellow dots, and red dots. So for Canada at 2.30, uh, they have the unemployment rate. So that's, that's a red dot. That means that that's quite an important number. And if it drastically changes compared to the expectation, you'll find that the currency will increase significantly or decrease significantly. And it can be quite risky holding a position during this time if you're not well prepared for it in terms of your risk management. So now we go on to Forex lot sizes. So your broker will show standard position sizes for Forex. One standard unit, a mini unit, and a micro lot. You'll find that these sizes will be more applicable to different size accounts. So for example, let's look at a standard lot. A standard lot is equal to 100,000 units. So if your broker is giving you one is to 100 leverage, you'll find that $1,000 of your equity in your account will allow you to buy one standard unit of currency, depending what pair, but if we talked about Euro USD, that would equate to 100,000 units. So you could actually be holding $100,000 worth of a Euro USD position uh, with only $1,000 in your bank account. I look, that's un it's not advisable, because you're not leaving much room for any movement and you can really destroy an account by doing such. But just as an example, that is the, that is the, uh, the magnitude of, of what you can achieve in, uh, in Forex trading with leverage, but also the danger. If we look at a mini unit, that's 0.1 of a standard unit, 10%, which will equate to say a $10,000 position. Again, this changes for different currency pairs, but let's use this in, in terms of value, but let's use this as a, as a basis to work from. A micro lot would give you a thousand units and a nano lot would give you a hundred units. Not all brokers have nano positions available, but they certainly have micro positions available. So if we have a look at a, the pair here, the Euro USD, you'll see that one standard lot equals a hundred thousand dollars and one hundredth of a cent which is what a pip value is which is a common term used in forex trading will equal ten dollars 
So if the currency pair moves by one hundredth of a cent, your position will either move $10 into profit or $10 into loss if you have a standard lot position. Now on a mini lot, this would be $1. And on a micro lot, it would be 10 cents. And on a nano lot, it would be one cent. So again, depending on your account size, should you decide whether you wanna be trading standard lots, mini lots, micro lots, or nano lots. One of the other things that we spoke about for Forex is being able to go long and short. So what does this mean? Simply put, when a trader thinks a currency will appreciate, go up in value, they'll go long the underlying currency. And when the trader expects the currency to depreciate, go down or reduce in value, they'll go short the underlying currency. So if we look at the illustration on the right, if we were buying, if we were looking at the markets in this period here and we thought, Yes, this is a graph of the USD South African Rand. We believe that the USD is going to strengthen against the South African Rand and the Rand is going to get weaker. We would buy, we would go long. That means we are buying US dollars and selling South African Rand because we believe that the USD is going to get stronger. If you close your position after it's risen, you'll be in a profit. And if the price, if the, if the USD weakened, you would be in a loss. Alternatively, you could be looking at the markets and you could say, well, I'm looking at what's going on and I think the South African economy is doing quite well and I think there's a lot of things happening in the US. I believe that the RAND is going to get stronger. So because the, the way that Forex is quoted, it's the base currency first and the quoted currency last, we would say, well, for the USD South African RAND, if I believe the RAND is getting stronger, I should short meaning I should sell. That means I'm selling my US dollars and I'm purchasing South African Rand. So a little bit more about how Forex pricing works. As we saw in the previous slide, the, when you quote a currency, for example, Euro USD or USD South African Rand, the first currency in the quote is known as the base currency. The second currency quoted is known as the quoted currency. So when you're buying and when you're selling, you're offered two different prices. There's the bid price, which is the price that you'd sell at, or the ask, which is the price you'd buy at. And the difference between the two is known as the spread. The spread is what the, the broker makes as their revenue. That's how they make money, is through the spread. Banks do this as well. If you've ever changed money at a bank and you've asked them to give you a rate because you would like to buy dollars or you would like to sell dollars uh, when you're going overseas or for any other purpose, and you'll see that what, what the difference in the price is, there'll be a spread. It's not the same price because they make money on the in-between. So you can see in this illustration at the bottom, the difference between the buy and sell gives you 0.00006 cents, which is 0.6 pips. Now, if you were trading one standard unit, 0.6 pips, depending on the currency pair, could equal $6. So let's just define the bid. The bid is the price at which the trader can sell the base currency in the hope that its value decreases relative to the quoted currency. The ask is the price at which the trader can buy the base currency in the hope that its value increases relative to the quoted currency. And the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Also, pips, as we spoke about before, it's defined as a hundredth of a cent. Therefore, one cent is a hundred pip movement. So if the price changes of a, of a quoted currency pair from, say, one 36 to 137, that would be a 100 pip movement. Okay, let's talk about some leverage and margin. This is an important concept to understand when trading, especially Forex and CFDs, because this can be the difference between uh, get, blowing an account completely um, and also being able to be there to trade in the long run, which is what we aim to do. So 
we use margin to create leverage. For example, in an account of one is to 100, that means your $1,000 balance will allow you to trade with $100,000. We spoke about the standard lots of currency and the PIP movements. But let's look at this, this graph on this, this image on the right. Depending on what your leverage is, and in this case, it's a 50 is to one, you would only need $200 in your account to be able to trade a, or take a position of up to $10,000. If your leverage of your account was higher, say 100 to one, it'd be $20,000. So you can see when there's a movement in price of a position that you have, whether it's up or down, you'll find that uh, your, your profit or your loss relative to the amount, your margin, your equity that you used for the position can be quite significant. Okay, let's look at some different methods of trading. We have fundamental analysis. That's understanding the economy it's economic indicators, um, understanding the impact that interest rates, employment rates, and other key economic indicators have on a currency price. It's, it's the type of trading that if you were trading shares or stocks, you would look at the financial statements and you would understand the value of the share relative to the assets, the liabilities, and you'd take a more in-depth look um, to to the structure of what's happening behind the scenes. You also have technical analysis, which is looking at the charts. Now, there's often a divide between people who believe in fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Uh, technical analysis, people believe that, well, all of those things that are in the background, for example, um, the, the key economic indicators or the financial statements are accounted for in the price. So we should therefore look at price and what it's doing and try and make an, a speculation or an assessment from there as to which way the, the stock will go or the, or the currency pair will go up or down. Now, there's no reason why you can't be a fundamental analysis, a analyst a t or a technical analyst. Both who are done with conviction and done properly can yield you profit. And there's no reason why you can't be both. Um, you might use technical analysis for the way you enter or exit. You might use fundamental analysis and news and different things like that to gauge feeling or sentiment around something. Because uh, you know, if you look at a lot of stock prices recently, uh, let's take you know Boeing for an example, or some of the um, you know, Apple or some of the other the stock companies during this COVID crisis, you'd find that um, a lot of them took quite a price beating as soon as news broke of Corona. Although we were in a pandemic, uh, did they deserve to drop 50% of their value, some more, um, only to recover everything uh, a few weeks later? Um, now, the financial statements might not necessarily have changed, the economic indicators may not have necessarily changed significantly either, depending on how long your country was in lockdown or things like that. But did it warrant those size movements? Now, if you're a technical analyst, you may have been able to capture some of that. A fundamental analyst may have also been able to capture some of that by gauging sentiment. So there are pros to, to both methods of trading. Now, also, we have to look at what type of trader you are. Are you a day trader? Are you an investor? Are you somebody who likes to buy and hold? Or would you like to be part of the action, hold a position for 10 minutes, one hour, two days, three days, one week? Uh, this really depends on your lifestyle, your balance of work and home life, whether you want trading to be for a living, uh, where you are, there's so many different aspects. Your personality plays a large role in this as well. So let's just take a look at time frame so you can get an idea of what uh, it means. And also, funnily enough, with different time frames, you can be more relaxed, take it easy, check every now and again. And with other time frames, you can have a high pressure, high performance, uh, high detriment situation. 
So before we move on to this, let's just look at these candles quickly so that you can uh, understand what the graph on the right is, is, is showing. So when a candle is green, or in our case uh, on, the, on the chart on the right, white, green means that that candle opened, let's use this tool here, Sorry, let me go back. Mm, presentation doesn't. There we go. Sorry. Let's use this tool here. So, a green candle would mean that it opened at this bottom bar and it closed at this top bar where it's all colored in. The two wicks on the end indicate the, the range of price action during that time. So if, for example, we're looking at a one minute chart, that would mean that this candle forms in one minute. So in this case, the price might have opened here, it may have dropped down to the low, it may have increased all the way up to the high, and then finally closed uh, at, at the closing price. And then after one minute, a new candle starts forming. If you're looking at a one hourly chart, this range of motion is now happening in one hour. A four hourly, it would take four hours. A daily, a candle that represents daily price action, weekly and even monthly candles. If we look at the candle on the right, that is a bearish candle, meaning a candle where the price opened higher and closed lower. So in this case, it may have opened at this price where it says open, gone up to the high, the price movement, down all the way to the low and retraced a little bit and closed uh, at, the, at the close. You'll find that if you actually think about the process of price in that time frame, a lot of information can be gathered. You can really understand what's going on in the background with buyers and sellers, how they're competing for different prices and who's winning. So in the case of a bullish candle, this green one, the buyers won that time period. So in the, if it's one minute, it means the buyers won that one minute. If it was a daily, it means the buyers won that day. Whereas in a bearish candle, it's the sellers who won they won that period. So let's have a look at the graph on the right. What we can see is you can choose on your charting software, whichever you use, what time period you'd like to look at, what you'd like to analyze. And you don't have to analyze just one time period. I often analyze more than one. I will look at perhaps the one hourly and then I'll look at the daily and see how that fits my rule set and if I am feeling that there's strength in the position that I'd like to take, whether it's long or short. But what's important to understand is looking at noise and how price moves up and down. Now, if we look at the, the, the bottom picture, you'll see there's a 15 minute graph. You can see how it's very spiky, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But if we were looking at 60 minute candles, that's gonna be much smoother the movement in that time period will be much more smoother because remember you now have, you have four 15 minute candles for one 60 minute candle. So it's going to be smoother than a 15 minute. And then again, a four hourly, it's more relaxed. So if you're a high intensity day trader, then you'll be seeing up, down, up, down, up, down all the time. Whereas you might be somebody who's looking at holding a position for, a month. Does it really matter necessarily what happened today? Uh, you, you're not going to need to look at your computer every five minutes to see where you're at. Because also with this, your position sizes should change because you're managing risk. So you'll find that people who trade smaller time frames are looking for small movements and they're going to trade much bigger position sizes. People who trade longer time frames may trade smaller position sizes because they're looking for a larger overall move. 
Now let's look at money management and psychology. This to me is the most important concept to do with trading. The reason I say this is because understanding the risk that you put yourself in every time you take a trade is one of the most, is, is completely the most important uh, part of trading. And because statistically, if you're taking positions where the loss could be 50% of your account, you, it's inevitable. You're, gonna, you're going to blow your account sooner or later. You might have a winning streak for a week or, or a month, but eventually if you're taking large risks like that, you're going to blow your account. So the idea is to not get yourself into that position, rather fund your account properly and take lower risk positions. But the most important thing here is to look at the maximum loss. How much of your account are you willing to risk on a single trade? So don't look at it as if I was right, look how much money I would have made. You need to look at it as if I'm wrong, am I still going to be able to continue trading tomorrow, the next day and the next day? Is this loss going to impact me significantly? So I like to, I like to only risk 0.5 to 2% of my account on any trade. Um, I mean, 2% is a, is a standard rule of thumb that people talk about. And I'm going to show you uh, why um, in the next slides. But for me, depending on what other positions I've got open, um, I'll tend to even take that risk a bit lower. I, I'm happy to make less, lose less, but stay here for the long run. And I'll explain why long run is important as well in the next slide. Also, the psychology. Um, the, the discipline to stick to the right position sizes when you're on a winning streak is difficult because you can feel on top of the world and you want to bet more and more and more and more because you feel like, uh, you know, you're unbeatable. And then all you need is one time and you've lost everything you've worked for. So the discipline to stick to what you're doing. But discipline also comes into another side of things. Sometimes you do have a losing streak you may lose five, six, seven trades in a row. And then you become anxious and you lose the confidence to trade the normal position size and you start risking only 0.1% on a trade or something that really isn't worth trading, but you don't, you, that confidence is gone because you, you've had so, much, uh, so many losses in a row. And that's where adversity comes in and maintaining a winning attitude and believing in your system. But then you might say, well, how do you believe in your system? The best way to do that is to understand long run positive expectancy. And we're gonna cover that in the next couple of slides. So let's talk about how we're going to manage our risk. The first way to do that is with a stop loss. A stop loss is an order that you place at a specific price at which your position would be in a loss, but you're not willing to lose any more. What will happen is that when the, if the price reaches there, your broker will execute that order and close your position and you'll take the loss. But what's really good about this is you've defined it. You've, you, you knew and accepted what you were willing to lose. This is really, really important. Some people don't put stop losses because they may believe that, um, you know, the broker is looking out for the stop loss and he wants to, or she wants to um, uh, hit the stop loss so that you lose your position. And maybe if you are working with a dishonest uh, a broker or non-regulated broker, that perhaps could be the case. But even if that is the case, by not having a stop loss and a news item happening, uh, while you may be at the gym or somewhere else and you're not watching the screen or, and somebody presents something on the news that's very controversial or something happened in a country and your, your currency drops significantly, that position can drop so much and you have no protective stop in place to take you out that it will keep going until there's no money left in your account. And this is common. This has happened to many people. 
Uh, so I'm, I mean, always, 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 always use a stop loss. That, that is the one thing that must always happen is use a stop loss. It'll save you m more times than, than you'll actually appreciate. Over and above, it helps you know what your maximum risk is. You can go to sleep at night if you have a position open and know that your stop loss is there to protect you. You can also use a order called a profit target or a take profit. That's the order that you place with your broker that once the price reaches that point, you will be more than happy to take the profit that you're in. This you can do if you like, or you don't have to do it. It's, it's not putting you at risk. You may just want to leave the position open and run, or you may have another method of managing your position. As the price increases, perhaps you move your stop loss closer to your break even. That's one method so that you say, well, I'm happy to let this profit run, but I'm also not prepared to lose anything because I'm in a profit at this point in time. So I'll move my stop loss up. So how you move, use your profit, your, your take profit and your stop loss during a trade is how you're managing your trade. You may want to add positions to your, to, your, to your trade as well. However, only add positions when you're in profit. Adding positions when you're in a loss will accentuate your loss. And sooner or later, that loss will be far more higher than the maximum risk you are willing to take on the trade. Once you set a stop loss, don't move it. Don't move it. Because a lot of the time, it's very, it's very uh, tricky because what happens is the price is dropping and you feel like, oh, it's going to stop dropping. Let me move my stop loss a little lower, a little lower, a little lower. And before you know it, you're in too deep. Rather keep the stop loss where it is. And if you need to play with something, play with a take profit. However, when you do set a take profit, don't just set it because you feel like it should be in a particular position. Try and add some logic behind it. Try and say, well, I think this is a logical price that it may reach for certain reasons. Write it down in a journal and that way you can keep track of how you're making your decisions. And from there, you'll learn, you'll learn much faster because you'll be able to see what you've done that's correct and paid off and what you've done that hasn't and see the ones, the decisions you're making that are paying off more times than not. And those are the decisions that you build into your trading plan. So let's look at some key steps or key concepts to trading for a living. And these are just lessons that, that I've learned. I've been trading for um, close to 16 years um, and these are the lessons that I also feel that sometimes um, tend to be overlooked when people are looking for a, a system that's going to give them a uh, hundred percent accuracy that, that doesn't exist. What exists though is making use of proper money management and making use of a system that's giving you a positive expectant expectancy or positive expected value and then applying the discipline to allow that system to profit for you in the long run. And in order to be able to do that, you can't be in a rush. It, I know it's easy because you see people with Lamborghinis and boats and all these great things. Um, and you think maybe opening a trading account, uh, you can trade and, and buy that in a week's time. It, it's unrealistic. It's like, it's actually like any business, um, any successful business, is capable of making a certain return every year. So if you open an account with a thousand rand, um, it doesn't mean it's going to be a million rand in a year's time. Uh, that would that's un, unrealistic. It may be for somebody who's very very lucky, but that person, if they're taking risks like that, sooner or later, it it is unsustainable and statistically they they'll lose it all. So number one is don't be in a rush. The next thing is proper funding. Like we said, a thousand rand in an account won't sustainably give you an income, but it will also, but what it will do is help you build your confidence while you're trading in the system that you're using. And after some time, 
you will see that what you're doing is working or not working. And you can either adjust your system and practice some more, or you can start adding some more funds to your account so that you can realistically make a return. So it is possible to make 100% in a month, but there'll also be times when you lose just like any other business. So you need to be prepared for this. Treat your operation like a business. You need to evaluate your profit and loss. And I say do that after 100 trades. Don't do it after 10 trades, not even 20 trades, but after 100 trades. 100 trades will give you approximately a 70% confidence in your trading ability. Once you get up to say 700 trades, that can almost give you a 95 to 99% uh, confidence in, in your trading ability. So do your first 100 trades with a small account if you've never traded before. And, and gauge where you're at and, and, and decide if you'd like, if you're happy with what you're doing, you can add more. So let's look at like realistic returns. If you're doing better than 4% return per month on your trading account value, I would probably increase my account size. I would add more money to my account size. I'd be very satisfied that my system is working well. And potentially I would, I would take slightly smaller positions than my 2% risk. That way I've reduced the risk on my account, but I've increased the amount of money in my account. And say I'm now doing 3% or 2% a month, I'm less likely to be in a, in, a, in a high drawdown or loss position, but I'm also very, very happy with the income that it's giving me. Understanding your numbers, very important. So if I'm doing, for example, risking 2% per trade, 2% of my capital per trade on a 1,000 Rand account, and I decide to make my account a 2000 Rand account. Let me add an extra thousand Rand to, to increase the value of my account. It doesn't mean I have to keep risking 2% capital. Capital. I might risk one and a half percent capital now. This way you're significantly reducing the, the, the risk on your account. So let's have a look at it. If you aim for 4% as an average per month, so you know some months you might make 0%, the next month you make 8%, your average is 4%. If you make 8% a month, 4% a month on a 1,000 Rand account, by month 24, your account value will be 2,563 Rand. That's supposed that you compounding your account by increasing your position sizes as your account increases in value. Very important concept. There's no point having a 1,000 Rand account and not increasing your position sizes. You really should. Um, to, may, maybe you don't have to do it the full 2% the whole way through. Like I said before, you might go down to 1.5% to reduce the risk. But don't go down, to, don't, don't maintain the same position size. So if you're doing a, a, a micro lot trading on a 1,000 euro um, rand account, don't keep doing a mi one micro lot when you get to 2,000 Rand. Rather do maybe one and a half or two micro lots. You, you want your account to grow in, a, in terms of percentage relative to the balance. So with proper position sizing and risk management, it's almost impossible to lose your money. So this is the secret to trading. A good system plus risk management equals success. And like any business, you should know your numbers. So now we're getting into some in-depth stuff here. Um, I know it's seeming a bit technical, but I just think it's such an important thing to understand. So we evaluate your profit and loss after 100 trades. If you're doing better than 4% return, increase your percent size. Look at how much you risk per trade, 0.5 to 2% capital. If you do 2% capital per trade, you would need to lose more than 350 trades in a row to blow your account. 
and you'd need to lose 34 trades in a row to halve your account. Now, what I've done on the right-hand side here is a graph distribution of one of my trading accounts. Okay, uh, there was 400 and 20, 428 trades done. So remember we said evaluate after 100 trades. This account has 428 trades. So quite a significant number. And what this tells you, I hope you can all see this clearly, but what this tells you is that I had, where I won, where, sorry, where I lost one trade in a row, it happened to me 36 times. Where I won one trade in a row, it happened to me 40 times, right? Where I had two losses in a row, like a loss followed by a loss. So loss, loss, that happened to me 23 times over the course of this 428 trades. But I only won two trades in a row 12 times. So just have a look at these numbers here. And the main one I want to get to is there was a time when I had 12 losses in a row. This happened to me one time. It happened to me one time, 12 losses in a row. But there was also a time where I had 17 wins in a row. I won 17 times in a row. So if you think about what you go through when you're trading like this, my system didn't change. I didn't do anything differently. It's just how maths and statistics works. It's, it's just how it works. So it's like if you're flipping a coin. Sometimes you can have, it's a, we know it's 50-50, right? But you can have heads in a row six times. It's not uncommon. Or tails in a row six times. If you flip a coin a thousand times, look at the distribution of heads and tails. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, 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 tails. It's exactly the same with trading. Win, loss, win, win, loss, loss. So that's why understanding how you risk. If I'm only risking 2% of my capital and I have 12 losses in a row, yeah, okay, it's not ideal, right? But I've still got enough money in my account to keep trading. But if I was risking 10% or 20% on a single trade and something like that happens, you're out of the game. Also, if I win 17 trades in a row, which happened here, um, you'll see that if I'm going to feel on top of the world and that's where you need to keep your ego and your emotions in check. The, let's look at the total wins and total losses. So in the distribution, we see how it happened. You know, 12 losses in a row one time, 36 losses in a row, uh, one win, loss 36 times, uh, 17 wins in a row one time. Well, in total, regardless of the distribution, we had 232 wins and 198 losses, right? That's a 54% win rate in this particular trading account. You might say, but well, it, that's not great. Well, actually, it is good. It also depends on how big my losses were and how big my, my wins were. And I'm going to show you that now on the, on the next slide. I just want you to see this middle column here. I don't know, it is a bit small, um, but it says balance. If you started with a thousand Rand, you'd have to lose 34 in a row to get to 500 Rand. And if you just look at my distribution, losing 34 in a row is really not easy. If you're doing proper, it's just not, it's just not easy. And if you're doing proper risk management, you, you're definitely gonna be fine. You, you should never lose 50% of your account. Let's go to the next slide. So this brings me on to expectancy. Now this is a really, probably the, after risk management and money management, this is probably maybe if not as important. Um, well, yeah, it actually is. It, it is as important because if you trade something with a negative expectancy, even if your risk management and everything else is great, you're gonna lose in the long run, right? You're gonna, you're going to, lose in the long run. But if you trade something with a positive expected value or positive expectancy and you practice proper money management, you're going to succeed in the long run. And that's what makes trading for a living so possible. It makes it so, so possible. If you can appreciate these concepts and apply, and when you understand the concepts, it helps with your discipline because you don't feel lost. 
you feel that you 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 can see what's happening when you have 12 losses in a row you can you can you can handle it and when you have 17 victories in a row you can also handle it so this number expectancy this is what casinos understand the best and this is why they make money because it's also known as your edge if you have an edge you make money and the way that happens and how it's calculated is as follows the probability of a win times the size of the win minus the probability of a loss times the size of a loss that equals your expected value so guys there's so many different systems or trading methods and all these different things whatever you use and how you decide to trade if it doesn't have an edge you're going to lose money if it does have an edge you're going to win money and the way to find out if you have an edge or not is you need a big enough sample or database of trades that's why i was suggesting at least 100 trades because you can evaluate your performance more trades is the more the better so let's go through this so for example if you have a system like the one in the previous slide that has a 54 percent chance of winning and our average win is 100 rand and our average loss is 90 rand then the calculation would look like this we'd have 0 0.54 54 percent times 100 which is the amount that we win each time our average win minus 46 percent so that's the difference between 100 percent um and 54 percent we, we it needs to add up to 100 percent so we have 54 percent times 100 minus 46 percent times 90 90 rand being your average loss that equals 12 rand 60 you have an edge you have in fact you have a very big edge this means that the trading system gains us 12 rand 60 per trade I mean that means you're making money so depending if you were trading a small position size let's say and it meant that in the long run if you were to average everything out it shows that you're making 12 rand 60 per trade that means your system has a positive expected value so if your system is giving you five signals a day you should take literally every single one of those signals because you know that it has a positive expected value now let's look at it in in another way if the system has a 54 percent chance of winning so the same as in the example on the previous slide that we saw with the data distribution it's got a 54 percent chance of winning with an average win of 80 rand and an average loss of 100 rand so you can see your loss is 20 rand higher than your win so you are losing more each time but you have a 54 percent chance of winning well let's do the calculation it's not even worth guessing just do the calculation always so 54 percent times our win 80 minus 46 percent times our loss 100 gives us a negative two rand 80. This means that the longer we keep trading, every single time we trade, we are effectively losing two rand 80. That means you don't have an edge. That means whatever system or whatever you're doing has got a negative expected value. And regardless of your discipline or anything like that, you are going to lose money in the long run. You need to change your system. There's, not, there's something that's not right. And this is exactly the same as when, if you're running any sort of business, um, it could be a restaurant, you know, is it worth you stocking the restaurant with, um, or 70% of your freezer space with steak and the other 30% with vegetables? Um, it, it depends on your clientele. You need, to, you need to understand how you manage your, your stock and how you apply it in the market. Well, same with trading. You need to understand your system and is it actually a positive system? It's super, super important. Super important and 
very much overlooked. So let's say you should do at least 100 trades to calculate if you have an edge or not. As I said before, after 100 trades, if you calculate your expected value and it says 12 Rand 60, 100 trades, I'd be say about 70% confident in that calculation, which is good enough for me to continue trading that system. Once you get to 400, 500, 700 trades, if you calculate your expected value again and it comes out at 12 Rand 60 or somewhere around there, you could be fairly, fairly certain that what you're doing, you're doing well and you're doing right. Now, an edge of one Rand or, or it, I wouldn't recommend it. There is another way to calculate expected value and expectancy where it takes into account um, your risk. So if you're risking one Rand, what are you getting back? one rand 20, two rand. So that is another way to look at it. And that is a way that you should also consider. Um, and we'll, do, we'll go into more depth in f future webinars on concepts. This is just supposed to be an introduction um, presentation, but I just feel like this is something that you really need to just, just hear about. So I'm gonna, this, this, is, this is real by the way. This is the, the, the trading account um, that I showed you. So we did a, a cumulative profit um, for the last hundred trades in a one month period with a starting account balance of 10,000 US dollars. So let's say that's, um, uh, uh, 170,000 Rand. I don't know what the exchange is today. I think it's, I think it's about 17 or somewhere around there. 170,000 Rand. After one month, we were at 10,645 US dollars. So that's almost 11,000 Rand profit in 30 days. I mean, you, you can, that, that's extremely, I think that's extremely good, especially um, the fact that this account was taking low, very low, low risk trades. You can see when it first started out, it did have a bit of a bad run where the account was down. And this is important to have a look at it in terms of a percentage basis, as well as in terms of a, um, in terms of a, a actual value basis. So in terms of percentage, we were down 3% in the, in the first say week. Um, and from there we started climbing, but you can see it's not a smooth line. There are ups and downs, but when you play a positive expected game, although you have ups and downs, what you do have is a positive gradient. That means it's going uphill not downhill, it's making money. So at the end of the month, we had 6.45% 6 6 gain on our account, um, which, is, which is really good. I mean, that doesn't necessarily happen every month, um, but that is, that is very good. The aim is around 4%. Um, you know, th this account is handled very well. So, if we look at that in actual US dollars, yeah, we were down about what, $250 at one stage, which is not so bad, two and a half percent of your account. Um, I mean, that's not a major thing. That's more than one trade in a row um, with low risk, calculated risk. And it allows us to be able to keep, keep playing. If we took two high risk positions or two high positions, every time you have a down dip, I mean, it doesn't allow you to ever um, achieve this, this uphill gradient because the swing is too high. This is just a, a good way to show you what it looks like. And you should do this with your trading accounts as well. Whether it's a demo or whether it's a real life account, um, you should do this and you should know these numbers. Um, if you don't know these numbers, I wouldn't be trading um, with live money um, unless it's very small and it's something that you don't, um, you know, it's not going to affect your livelihood or your life. Um, but when you start trading with money that is going to affect your livelihood and your life, or you are trading for a living, then this is what you, you need to know this. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to some of our products. I hope you enjoyed so far what we've spoken about, but I'd like to show you a couple of our systems and uh, what we offer. So, we have a robot that we've, that we've,
programmed. Um, it's called Voltrader, and it works on a price action squeeze. So that's when the where there's not a lot of range of of motion in the in the candles. The candles are quite small, they or they're constricting. Um, it's a small range. Um, the buyers and sellers are you know at, at an even. Um, nobody's really winning, um, and then all of a sudden one side starts winning. What happens is you can see it flares open and the price starts moving one way and our robot enters us. When it enters you, it also puts in place the stop loss that we spoke about and the take profit, right? It calculates the stop loss based on how much you're willing to lose. So you could lose, you could say I'm only willing to lose 0.2% of my account and it will automatically choose the position size for you that suits that trade and your account size. What it also does is it moves the stop loss with the position and then will exit you out. So this system is called Voltrader. It is a robot. You don't have to trade on automatic settings. It's very important the way you configure it. We can help you with that. Um, or you can just have the indicators. The indicators are like these lines over the chart patterns. I'll show you how to set that up. Um, and, and this band's diff indicator here and the trigger point. We can show you how to do it manually. And perhaps it's better to start manual and just get a feel for how it works so that when you do have it on automatic mode um, you, you, and you monitor and you can see what's going on. There might be certain markets or certain conditions where you feel like, you know what, I'm not going to put it on the Euro USD, but I am going to put it on gold USD, for example. Um, so I think trading manually is a little, is quite important to begin with. Um, again, we'll help you with all of that. What it does is it lets your winners run. It doesn't cut you out. So uh, although it does have an anticipated take profit, what it also does is it does move the stop loss along with the position. It's called a trailing stop loss. So this goes for 800 Rand a month, the system. Um, yeah, it goes for 800 Rand a month. Um, we install it through MetaTrader 4. Um, if you don't have a trading account, by the way, we, we work with Hot Forex. We're an affiliate of Hot Forex. Um, we'll set you up with MetaTrader 4. Um, and a live or demo account and basically hold your hand the whole way through it and set up whichever one of our products you may be interested in. So this is just a bigger, bigger picture. So you can see a bit better. Um, you can see how the price action is constricting and then we have movement in one way or another. Um, and the sensitivity of this robot's decision making is based on our, our trigger line here. So here, um, it closed above the trigger line, so it would have entered a position. Whereas here, it didn't actually get below, so it wouldn't have entered. So here, this could have been a fake entry if the, position, if the, if the settings weren't done properly. Um, okay, let me move to the next one. This is the next one. It's called Price Action Indicator. Um, now, Price Action Indicator works on different movements of price action. And what it tries to identify is, and, and, and it does identify it quite well. And what it does identify is when there's powerful movement um, in a particular market, and it can be applied to different time frames. Um, what it does do, it's not a robot. We are bringing out the robot version of this, um, but at the moment it's just the indicator and it sends signals to your phone. Um, it tells you when to enter, it tells you what stop loss to put, and it also tells you what uh, take profit to put. Uh, it's sending between one and five signals a day um, on average. This system is the primary system that we use for um, our signals groups, although we do have a Voltrader signals group as well. Um, this system, when worked with the trade, uh, with the trend, is very high probability. Now, um, we, we will we'll use this, this system predominantly um, once, once we move into the automatic uh, robot. However, um, in, in the indicator mode itself, 
it's excellent for for manual trading it gives it you keep all the power of trading in your hands just with a guidance you know calculating your stop loss for you calculating your take profit for you and giving you very strong entries into the market um, uh, is 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 bread and butter for this price action indicator that also goes for 800 rand a month so here's a closer closer look at it um, this was on the one hourly chart um, we had one two three four five winning signals and one signal that was uh, not winning now this is with the trend um, for me personally when I trade with the price action indicator it's my favorite one um, I'll only take positions that are with the trend so the trend meaning that it's an uptrend. Um, you can look at it and you, if I asked you which way is the price going, you say it's going up. It's an uptrend. Um, I'll only take the signals that are with the uptrend. So although others may have taken this short, um, for me, I personally wouldn't take it purely because we're in an, it's in an uptrend. Um, so it's quite high probability. I mean, this is an exceptional system. Okay, so now I'd like to tell you about our signals group. So we have an exclusive signals WhatsApp group. Uh, signals are sent daily to subscribers and only our very best signals from Voltrader and price action indicator are sent. Um, on the signals group, we won't send signals that are with a downtrend, for example. So if we go back. Okay, if it lets me go back. Okay, well, on the previous slide, you saw that one signal that um, was against the trend. Uh, we we won't we won't send that on the group. Okay, here we go. So this this short that it's showing, um, we wouldn't send that on our signals group because it's against the trend. Um, we want to do whatever we can to keep the probability in our favour. Uh, that means don't trade against the trend. Some guys do do it. We don't. So uh, our very best signals from Vol Trade and Price Action Indicator are sent and we give entry, stop loss, and take profit. You're more than welcome to talk to us about risk and position sizing and anything like that. You'll be, you're part of the group, so um, you're more than welcome to talk to us about that. That's going for 350 Rand a month. So these are all of our products here. Mentor program, price action indicator, signals and leads, subscription we've got a traders academy coming up as well it's a master class um it's 2400 rand a month there's a lot of um video lessons pdf workbook problem solving simulations and at the end we'll give you a certificate of completion um what we really like about the traders academy is that it's very practical there is some theory like what we did in today's presentation it does go into a little bit of depth but we are more concerned about the application because the application, um, it, that's where you have like problem-based learning and you're overcoming real life situations, not just reading it in a book, um, you're actually doing it. And I feel like the lessons that you get out of that are far more valuable and will make you a much better trader. Also, we do trading equipment, fully loaded with all the, um, the, the software and everything that you need. And then also our Voltrader expert advisor or robot. So, I hope you enjoyed everything today. I just want to read out a brief of, of what we do um, to help you through your trading journey. Um, we're not a broker. Uh, we are affiliated to Hot Forex as a broker. Um, so we help you set up either a demo or live account. If you've had some trading experience, perhaps we start with live. You can fund it with as much as you like, although we recommend no less than a thousand rand. Then you can buy one of our products, for example, signals, systems, strategies, mentorship, or masterclass program. No matter which product from us you get, you'll become part of the Unsevo Forex family and be invited to our trader meetups and discussion and be part of our discussion groups. We hold your hand the whole way through the process until you're confident to trade alone. But even if you're trading alone, we're always here and the community is always here for support. Guys, if you have any questions, you'd like to talk about anything, more than welcome to in this Zoom webinar or please take down the WhatsApp number on the screen. 
You can send a WhatsApp directly to there. We'll phone you back. We can chat on WhatsApp, or we can we can uh, we can chat in here as well if you like. Um, you're welcome to raise your hand um, or type a message in the chat, and I can unmute you. We can discuss whatever you like. But I'd like to first also thank you very much for listening to today's introduction to trading. I hope you learned something. I hope you took something valuable away from it, um, and I hope it improves your trading or interests you further in trading if you haven't traded before.